Arsenal are on high alert for the signature of Alexander Isak. When is this bloody club shop going to open in? And what is happening with St James's Park? <laughs> Yes, yes, people, welcome back to the Magpie Channel TV, nearly Friday, and that day was apparently going to be the day of the new club shop opening, and we'll get at that first and foremost, we've got a few things to run through in this video, so make sure you smash the like and subscribe on it, however, my source on the club shop must have been about as useful as a bottle of out of day ketchup, because it looks like that uh, isn't happening, you know what I mean, unless, unless they've got the days mixed up, and they meant next Friday, got the dates wrong, yeah? Friday is mixed up, back and forward. The club shop, I've just been there and I'll put the pictures on your screen there. Now, had a meeting again on the club shop, near the club shop. And, uh, yeah, those pictures show it's obviously moving along. But it looks like unless there's a bit fire in the blokes, and maybe women, working through the night on night shift, I can't see that club shop opening tomorrow, unfortunately. But the aim is to have it open by the Arsenal game. But I tell you what, at this point, I can't even be able to talk about it anymore. What's the point in trying to... Give you a date or say a date when people are just hiring dates around and they're not right. Um, so aye, there's no point in even trying to say it. We know it should be open by Arsenal game. The club website says October. October's running out. Halloween next week. Chelsea next week. The target would surely be to get it open in time for those home games. To make some moolah. Aye, to get some people through the door at the club store. That's still patiently waiting. But eh... Uh, if it's not open by the Chelsea game, surely be open by the weekend of the Arsenal game, which will then be November. The Merit Centre one opens in November, the club have said that, but I tell you what, it's just beyond the point of even trying to give you it now. <laughs> it's just not even worth it anymore. So yeah, the club shop, like I said, is looking very unlikely for what I've seen this afternoon, that it'll be open tomorrow, should be open next week, should have been open a month ago. Yeah, that's that. Let's Let's move on. <laughs> However, let's move on to some more news that's been reported by the Mail tonight that uh, Newcastle are not in contract talks with Alexander Isak. So this week, the club officially released the video, the statement about Anthony Gordon signing a new deal. Everyone was like, great, Isak next. That's the way the world works. Now. Fantastic, but what's next? On to the next one. And that next one is, of course, Alexander Isak. However, these are reporting that Newcastle United are not in talks with the Swedish striker. It was rumoured that we were trying to get a deal tied up for Alexander Isak to extend his current contract that does indeed still have three years left on it. However, according to the mail, Isak's camp are not willing to sign a new deal yet. Apparently they are waiting to see how this season plays out and are wanting Champions League qualification before committing any more of his future to Tyneside, which has obviously led Arsenal to being on red alert. We know the Gunners are big fans of Isaac. They were interested in signing him from Sociedad before Newcastle did. And then we had all the comparisons of Thierry Henry to Isaac because of his dazzling runs and his clever finishing. And he's just agility in the way he moves, to be fair. It is very Henry-esque. But that's led to that uh, comparisons and the Arsenal fans getting excited and wanting him and Everyone's saying that Arteta and the Gunners need an out-and-out -out striker and Isaac fits that bill. He is the goal scorer. He is Premier League proven, even though he does have the injury record. That they are now after him. They are sniffing around, wanting a piece of him. Well, wanting all of him, to be fair. Newcastle can't tie him down, but they aren't too bothered by that. Apparently, they aren't overly worried about Isaac because he does have those three years remaining on the contract, and he is one of the tune's highest earners. Unlike Gordon, who did still have time left on his contract, he wasn't on the best of wages, but because of his skyrocketing form and getting in the England side and links to Liverpool, Newcastle have sealed a new deal for him, thankfully. But with Isaac, they've tried, but they aren't too fussed, if you like, because they believe that they can still command a big fee shall another team come in for him. So there's that. And then obviously the, the worrying thing for me... I was it worrying for you a lot? Let us know. Concern being Isaac not committing to to the mags. You know, seeing how it goes. Which we've said time and time again. Me and Keg have said it specifically on the podcast, you know, that these players need to, we need to, sorry, do well, get success, win trophies, get European football, 
to keep these players, to keep your Isaacs, your Brunos, your Botmans. We were saying just the other night, you know, will Isaac and that be here next season if we failed to get top, well, top four according to these reports with Isaac's agent, or even top six, you know, would these players be happy with Conference League? Maybe we did too well too soon and given the likes of Bruno and Gordon a taste of the biggest nights in football at the San Siro and the Champions League nights at St. James's against PSG, maybe that has set the standards, set the bar too high, too soon. Because now they expect that and they want that. You know, that's the worrying thing, is if we had a natural progression of Thursday nights away to bloody middle of anywhere in the Conference League, you know, Switzerland B team or something, or Europa League to um, the middle of Turkey or something, then would that have eased them in better than, like I said, bloody Borussia Dortmund in the Champions League? So, yeah, that one is worrying for me, Zach, but I tell you what, it's just realistic, to be honest, because you, you can't expect these top, top players to stay here when you're not delivering. So maybe if you can convince them of the project and just say, have a bit of patience, give her one more year. It happened because of X, Y, and Z, FFP, and look who we're going to say in the summer. Maybe you can get them that way, but he's out there. It's not looking too good. If I'm just reading what the mail has said specifically, let's put me specs on. You know how bad my eyesight is. There is a high chance that Arsenal will come in from next summer after his camp were reluctant to commit to a new long-term deal. While the Magpies would not want to lose their star striker, and he is thought to be perfectly happy living on Tyneside and working on already how, Sporting Director Paul Mitchell has spoken of the need to trade players to increase their score for spending within the profit and sustainability rules. The hierarchy and senior staff also recognise a need for this and the way things are going, basically. So, yeah, I've covered most of it there, but... That is the way things are going and we will have to trade, especially if we don't manage to hit European qualification. I mean, it's only a matter of time before we lose one of these top players, isn't it? Before you lose an Isaac, a Bruno or whatever. And you have to cash in on them, but it's not always the end of the world. Look, uh, Villa fans might have felt that way when they lost Jack Grealish, but that £100 million propelled them to be able to spend that on a few really good players and Emery's doing a cracking job there and they're, they're flying on there, so... Maybe it's that type of thing you need sometimes. It might not always be necessarily the worst possible outcome, but obviously we didn't want to lose Isaac, but he needs to get back to this form that we're looking for. And if you want to make a profit on that 63 million, you're going to have to start scoring goals again. Let us know what you think. Will Isaac be here next year? Would you take 100 million for him? Drop it in the comments below. There's some of the good stuff in this mail article here where the talks is about Amanda Staveley not being happy about her leaked WhatsApp messages. Obviously, I did a video on that the other day, so check it out. And then there's also a part and message there about St. James's Park stating that anybody who's in a whiff of the St. James's Park stadium plans, whether that be expansion or a complete new stadium, has signed NDAs, which is obviously what I talked about in a video a few weeks ago when I said people are coming out saying they think they know this and that's not going to happen in this park and that's not going to happen in that part of the city and this is the only option Nobody can really comment on that because nobody really knows. And if you do know, you are definitely under an NDA about the future of the club because imagine that, getting out and just potentially ruining plans and stuff, you know, and, and getting in the way of things. But those type of huge projects, until signed off or completely agreed or underway, you know, not everyone's going to know. And those that do know, even the fan advisory board that have been asked about this many times are saying an NDAs according to this article. So, everyone's tight-lipped on the future of St. James's Park. I'm going to go watch Chelsea now. They've just kicked off against Panthenaikos and they've actually made 11 changes. That's how many bloody players they've got. They can make a full 11 changes to their side. So, if you thought it was a good thing that they've travelled to Greece tonight a couple of days before we play them, not when they've got four different bloody teams they can pick. <laughs> and the Todd Bowl, you know, all the hundreds of players he signed... That is mad that they've made full 11 changes. Because it's not like Panthenaikos no mugs either. You know, we take them out of the Conference League and we say you could be playing bloody Carabag bag or, you know, any bag, Aldi bag, you know, whatever designer bag, middle of nowhere. These are actually a decent side, Panthenaikos. You know, that's a quality European opposition. So, interesting stuff. Busy weekend ahead, people. Eddie has press conference tomorrow. Might be back with a video on that tomorrow. There's some interesting stuff to talk about. 
Chelsea preview over on the Omelie app with Matisse. Mentioned that in yesterday's video. Have a look at that. Let us know your thoughts on everything in today's video. Comments below. Subscribe to the channel and I'll see you on the next one.